Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about fallback avatars, why they're important, and how you can upload one for yourself. So for the first half of this video, I'm going to introduce you to fallback avatars, what they are and how they work. And for the second half of the video, I'm going to walk you through optimizing your avatar to be a fallback in Blender. A fallback avatar is sort of like a backup, so anytime your main avatar can't show, people will see a fallback instead. Fallbacks will show up for mainly three reasons. Number one, your avatar is poorly optimized and people have it hidden by default. Number two, your avatar isn't uploaded to whatever platform that person's using. And number three, people have manually chosen to hide your avatar. If you don't upload your own fallback avatar, other people will see a default fallback avatar instead. In order for you to upload an avatar as a fallback, it has to be compatible on both PC and Quest or Android, and it has to be rated good or better. So here I've compiled a list of requirements that your avatar must meet or be better than in order to be considered a fallback for PC. You can pause the video or screenshot these requirements, or you can go to the VRChat website, which is where I found these requirements from. I will have it linked in the description. And here are the fallback requirements for Quest, same thing, I'll have it linked in the description, or you can screenshot it. So here are the main four requirements that are most difficult for people to meet with their avatar. Stuff like lights and particles are easy, you can just choose not to add them. But polygons, bones, meshes, and materials might be difficult because you manually have to remove some things from your avatar. If your avatar already meets all of the requirements necessary to be a fallback avatar, then you can skip this section of the video where I'll be in Blender walking you through how to make your avatar meet the requirements. For now though, I'm going to be using my avatar as an example to show you how to turn your avatar into a fallback avatar. To follow this part of the tutorial, you're going to need three things. Number one, your avatar as well as its materials. Number two, a Blender installation. And number three, Cat's Blender plugin. Cat's Blender plugin is a free resource that's going to allow us to optimize our material a lot quicker than we would be able to otherwise. You are able to make a fallback avatar without using Cat's, as well as avatars in general. However, for this tutorial, I'll be using Cat's Blender plugin. If you don't already have it installed, navigate to the Cat's Blender GitHub page, which I've linked in the description. On the GitHub page, find the latest release, scroll down, and download the zip file. Now inside of Blender, we have to finish installing the add-on. At the top of your screen, find Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and locate the zip file that you just downloaded. Please note, be sure to select the whole zip file, do not extract it before trying to install the add-on. And please note that at this time, Cat's Blender plugin does not support Blender 3.0. Make sure you're using Blender 2.79, any of the 2.8s, or any of the 2.9s for now. Now, if you haven't already, import the model that you wish to turn into a fallback. So before we can start using Cat's, we're going to have to make a couple of changes to our model manually. In order for a fallback to be eligible for Quest, we have to have 90 bones or fewer. In order to see how many bones your avatar has, select its armature, hit tab to enter edit mode, and here you'll see how many bones you have selected out of how many total bones it has. If you don't see the information, visit this dropdown and make sure show statistics is checked. I have 94 bones total, which means I need to get rid of 4 bones in order for this model to be eligible. Keep in mind deleting certain bones will mess up your avatar. I'm going to briefly show you how to fix it in this video, but for a more detailed explanation, I will be publishing an introduction to weight painting video. For the time being, I'm going to delete the last bone on each ear. Notice now that I've deleted the tip of the ear, the ear isn't moving properly. We can fix this by editing the object's weight painting. We now have to tell that part of the mesh to follow the next closest bone. Select your armature first, then use shift to select the mesh you want to edit. In the top left corner, switch from Object Mode to Weight Paint Mode. Then hold down Control on your keyboard and select the bone that you want to edit. If we enter Wireframe Mode, it will be a lot easier to see what we're working on. Dark blue indicates that the bone will not interact with the mesh at all. A bright red color indicates that the mesh will move exactly as the bone does. We want our weights to be somewhere in between so it looks a little bit more natural. Using your options on the left side of the screen, as well as the settings inside of the tool panel, smooth out the area of the mesh that we want to fix. In this case, I'm going to use the brush tool, set my blend mode to mix, and lower the strength of my brush. Now I can use the blur and average tools to smooth out what I painted. That was a very basic fix, but hopefully it serves as a good example. Notice how much better it moves already. 
Keep removing bones and fixing weights until you get to 90 bones or below. Now we can fix our poly count, meshes, and materials using CATS plugin. Inside of the CATS plugin, find the bake tab, which is where we will be doing most of our work today. If you don't see the bake tab, you need to update your CATS plugin. If this tab looks different to you, you're probably on a newer version of CATS. If you'd like a written set of instructions for the CATS bake function, you can click on this how to use button and it will direct you to a wiki page. In case Blender crashes or bugs, now would be a great time to file save as a copy of your avatar project. Fortunately, CATS comes with presets that help us with making an excellent avatar for a desktop and Quest. In this video, I'm only going to go over making it for Quest, but you can follow the same exact steps just using the desktop preset. As a starting point, I'm going to select the Quest preset and edit it from there. Since I'm alright with a good rated avatar instead of excellent, I'm going to adjust some of the settings. You can choose to leave the resolution at 1024, or you can upscale it to 2048 if you don't mind a little bit of a performance drop. Texture sizes need to be specific numbers, so just pick one of these two and stick with it. Now I'm going to slightly raise our polygon count from 7500 to 10,000. Normally, Decimate would destroy the look of your model and make it super chunky and blocky. However, CATS creates a normal map for us, which will help smooth out some of the rough edges. At the time of recording this video, there's a bug with the prioritize head slash eyes function, so let's uncheck that for now. Finally, the last setting that we need to change depends on your model. You may have to try rebaking a couple of times if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. This setting is the method that CATS will use to reorganize your UVs. Try all of the different options to see what works best for you. With all of our settings good to go, we can now hit copy and bake. Please note this will take a couple of minutes to complete. Now that Cat's Bake is done, you'll notice we have a second model. Although they look very similar, our original model has over 70,000 polygons, where our new model has just 10,000. Other than a couple of issues, our model is nearly identical. The first thing that I notice is that the eyebrows are slightly clipping into the face, so I can enter edit mode to easily fix this. There are also some clipping issues on the lower back that can be fixed in the same way. If you do make any changes to the mesh, such as how I just did with the eyebrows, you will need to manually export your model here. When you bake a model using CATS, it will automatically export it as you'll see later in this video. However, this doesn't save any changes that you make to the mesh. If you haven't changed the mesh at all, you can skip this step and just use the automatically exported version. The remaining issues come from textures. We can easily fix these inside of the Texture Paint tab. Square and chunky issues like this are the result of errors with normals. Since painting on our texture looks pretty confusing, I'm going to paint directly on the model instead. Before painting, make sure to set your blend mode to add and the strength all the way up to 1. Doing this causes you to completely override any errors instead of just translucently painting on top of it. Also make sure that you color pick the purple from the background so we're resetting normals back to their original values as represented by the purple color. Now we can start painting and you'll immediately notice that our model starts to look better. After making any changes you wanted to make to the normal map, you can also edit the base texture, aka the diffuse texture. Although the model certainly isn't perfect, keep in mind that the fewer polygons you start with, the closer your model will look to the original. My model is a bad example because we got rid of over 85% of polygons that were in the original model. Before we finish up, make sure you save any images that you made edits to inside of Texture Paint. Otherwise, the changes that you made won't be reflected on our final model. In order to access your final model, go to the folder where your Blender file is saved. Here you'll find a new folder titled Cat's Bake. Open it, and inside you'll find your FBX and all of your textures. CATS uses a PBR, or physics-based rendering setup, which means it makes a separate texture for each part of the material. Here's our base texture, but we also have textures for emission, metallic, and so on. Now inside of Unity, we can import and set up the avatar as normal. I'm not going to go over the avatar setup process, however, I will show you where to put each of the textures that I talked about earlier. So as promised, I am going to show you how to set up the material for your fallback avatar. You can create a new material by right-clicking, selecting Create, and clicking Material. Since this fallback is made for Quest, we need to pick a Quest-compatible material. Currently, VRChat only has a couple of built-in Quest-compatible materials, but this could change in the future. Click on your material, Go to the inspector and look for where it says shader. The quest compatible shaders are found inside of the VRChat SDK. I can select VRChat and then mobile for an option of all of the quest compatible shaders. 
If your avatar has a normal map, you have to either use standard light, bump diffuse, or bump map specular. If your avatar has a mission, your only option is standard light. Otherwise, you can use Toonlit, Diffuse, Matte Catlit, or any of the other options I mentioned for your shader. Since my avatar has a mission, I'm going to be using standard light. Now we simply have to drag the textures into their appropriate slots to finish setting up our material. If you have an emissive map, make sure Enable Emission is checked. You can also adjust the emission color. Now that our material is set up, you can drag it onto your avatar. If you still don't like how it looks, you can mess with the sliders to your liking. Now that your avatar's material is all set up, you can finally upload it as a custom fallback. Keep in mind, for a Quest fallback, you'll have to be on the Android platform while uploading. For a PC fallback, you'll have to be on the Windows platform while uploading. If you have no idea what I just said, then I would suggest checking out a basic tutorial on how to upload an avatar first. That will come in handy. Moving on, open up the VRChat SDK control panel and sign in. Make sure your fallback avatar is selected, and then click Build and Publish for Android, or Windows if you're uploading to Windows first. Once it's done processing, you'll be asked to enter a name, description, and settings for your avatar. After filling out the information that applies to you, check Use for Fallback under the Cross-Platform section. Finally, agree to the confirmation statement and hit Upload. Once your upload is complete and you've repeated all the steps for both PC and Quest, your fallback is ready to be used and seen inside of VRChat. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my tutorial, and I really hope I was able to help you solve some of your issues with fallback avatars. If you have any questions or suggestions, as per usual, please do leave a comment. I do answer all of them. Oh, and also, I made a TikTok that advertises my particles and posts some funny videos if you'd care to check it out. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and until next time, signing off.